Hi everyone, uh, my name is Lauren and I'm here today to record a video for my new blog, Try T1D Tech, that's triathlon, type 1 diabetes, and technology. Uh, and this video is about swimming with a CGM. And I see a lot of questions about this online. People wanna know how can I get readings from my CGM despite the fact that I'm in water and the signal tends to get lost uh, in water. And a preview, you're gonna find out why I'm actually wearing two CGMs right now, both the Dexcom G6 and a Libre, and I'm also wearing two smartwatches. So here's my sensors and here's my swatch, smartwatches. Pretty cool, right? All right, so let's get started. Uh, first, I wanna go over some types of glucose monitors and the problems that they bring while swimming. First, the continuous glucose monitors that use Bluetooth, those are the Dexcom G5 or G6, the Libre with the Mau Mau on top, that's transmitting the Libre readings to a smartphone, um, or also the Medtronic sensors, the Guardian or M-Lite, these all use Bluetooth. And of course, the problem with our Bluetooth sensors is that Bluetooth has a range of only one centimeter in water. So you're gonna have a lot of problems trying to get signal from these devices in the water. Um, another problem that people have using our Bluetooth CGMs is that the receivers that you're using to get the readings are often not waterproof. And so your phone, your pump or receiver might not be waterproof and you wanna know how to deal with that. Uh, and finally, there are certain situations where you're swimming and you don't wanna bring your phone or receiver with you at all in the water. Uh, I have this problem because I do open water swimming and I'm gonna talk with you about how I found a solution to that. So next type of uh, glucose monitor, we have our flash glucose monitor. These uh, glucose monitors, specifically the Libre, uses NFC technology to transmit readings to a device. And you actually have to wave the phone or scanner over the top to get the NFC transmission. This is just like uh, you scanning your credit card or tapping your credit card in the store. It's your, the same technology that's being used. Now, the problem with this though, while open at water swimming, of course, is that it still requires a device to manually scan. And that has some of the same issues that I mentioned before around waterproofing. Now, I also want to mention the Dexcom G4 um, and using that for swimming. Uh, the Dexcom G4 actually uses radio transmission, which has good range and will transmit through water. So if you're still using the G4, you might find that uh, you actually get device uh, some readings while you're swimming pretty consistently. But the problems with the G4 are unfortunately unrelated to swimming. It's old technology, it's not going to be sold much longer, and of course, it still requires calibration. A lot of people are moving away from the G4 and on to our newer, um, newer CGMs, the G5 and the G6. And of course, it's still going to require a, a device to collect the readings, that's the receiver. And then for the G4, the receiver actually transmits to your phone. So you're gonna need two devices with you if you want to connect to the cloud. Uh, so let's talk about our first problem with Bluetooth having a range of only one centimeter in the water. Now, uh, if you do get disconnected, which happens to me fairly often, I just want to note that it does take about three and a half minutes to reconnect the Dexcom to your phone, which is quite a long time, especially if you're in the middle of a workout. Now, but for short sets, like if you're lap swimming, um, and you're, when I say short sets, I mean you're only swimming, say, one lap, maybe two laps at a time. You're probably not going to lose signal because each time you come back in and rest, if your phone is by the side of the pool, it's going to reconnect, even if it had some signal loss while you were actually out in the water. And I would say the same thing about just having a fun day at the beach or the pool. If your phone is nearby, you're coming in and out of the water a lot, it's probably going to reconnect and you're not going to have to worry about a lot of these problems. Um, the other thing you can try if you're a lap swimmer like me, you can try some uh, creative sensor placement. So I have a photo here of when I put 
the sensor uh, actually on my shoulder blade. And for me personally, while I'm swimming, this is a spot that's fairly out of the water. And I noticed a lot less signal loss while I had the sensor placed there. The downside is that not everyone is flexible enough to put the sensor kind of on their back by themselves. So I actually like would reach across and just push down the plunger or the button to put the sensor there. But again, not everyone is comfortable doing that. And if you're more muscular than me, it might be kind of irritating to have it there. All right, now problem two, how do you waterproof your phone, your pump, or your receiver? Now, if you're by the side of the pool, um, you can do what I do, which is I just put my phone in a plastic bag and hope that that's okay. If you have a later iPhone, they are more waterproof. Same with the newest Android phones. And I don't think you're taking a huge risk by just putting your phone in a plastic bag. But if you're doing something more extreme, um, for example, I hear people asking a lot about kayaking or whitewater rafting, you can buy a dry bag for your receiver or your phone. And those are fairly inexpensive on Amazon. People use them, for example, for boating and other kinds of things. Um, now for your pump, uh, you might wanna look into getting an aqua pack. I actually have one of these. It's on my pump right now. I have the T-Slim X2. And the aqua pack has a special um, top where you feed the tubing through and then it closes with a clamp with just enough space to fit your tubing through. And if you have the TESOL next to like me, you can see that the uh, buttons and the touch screen actually do work through the pump. So that's quite nice. You will still have access to it in the water. So that's uh, something you might want to look into to get readings um, and keep your phone receiver or your pump safe from getting bricked from the water. All right, now, what do you do if you can't or you don't want to bring your phone or your receiver with you when you're in the water? A uh, big question for me was, could I just connect my CGM to a waterproof smartwatch? Answer. Only certain Android watches can be used for a CGM without having to have a phone with you. Um, and you can look into Extra Plus. I'll put a link in my blog of how to get, get one of these smartwatches going for Android, uh, collecting readings directly from, say, a Dexcom or a Libre with Mau Mau. Um, but note that you still will have a lot of the same Bluetooth issues that I talked about before. Uh, just because you're, when you're swimming, your arm is going to be going underneath the water, going to be submerging the sensor, and it's going to have to reconnect just like it would for a phone. So still some Bluetooth issues there, even if you're using that standalone Android watch. But you can also implement the solution I have which is using a smartwatch by itself to scan the Libre. That's not using a Mau Mau, it's just using the uh, Libre by itself uh, to scan. And this uh, gets to our problem four, which is if you want to elim eliminate the problems with Bluetooth, you wanna go with Libre, you still need a device. And I think for those of us who are open water swimmers, this is, a really big and important problem because you don't want to bring another device out with you into the open water. Um, that said, you can put your Libre reader into a, or your smartphone into a dry bag. And I've actually seen on the type one diabetics athletes group that someone brought their Libre reader scuba diving with them um, and were able to scan the Libre underwater, which is pretty amazing. Or, you can do what I've done, which is use the Sony SmartWatch 3 to scan the Libre. So I will just have two watches on during my triathlon or my open water events. My Garmin um, will connect to my CGM or will get readings from my CGM during the bike and the run portions of the triathlon or when I'm out of the water. Uh, but during the water, I will just be waving the smartwatch three over the Libre, just across my body, you tap it, and there you go, your blood sugar pops up. I guess I should, let me try to do a demo here. 
uh, scan. And it just popped up. Uh, you can see it's backwards, but I got 102. Nice reading. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's how simple and easy it will be for me to scan the Libre during open water swimming. And I really feel very passionately that this is the best solution out there right now for those of us who don't want to carry anything with us, kind of want to have the most minimal setup, but still get uh, readings while swimming. And I've really, really enjoyed it while lap swimming as well, because I did have a lot of those signal loss problems that I mentioned before. And it's just such a pain when you're just really wondering, I'm on the border between being too low or not. Um, and then you have signal loss and you have to wait a whole like three to five minutes to get your readings back. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it's a little long, it was kind of a lot to explain. I hope you'll check out my blog at try T1D Tech on Medium uh, to learn more about smartwatches in particular. I have a video about setting up the Libre to scan with the Sony smartwatch three and also a video about setting up your Garmin device, either a watch or a bike computer to get your Dexcom or Libre readings. So thanks so much. See you soon.